But with us right now, we have two wonderful members of our community. One, uh, we have a uh, Dr. Reichert, Dr. Edward Reichert. He is going to be talking a little bit about some of the work he does around musical theater and a star singer and performer on both stage and music, uh, Rachel Grindle, who will be talking about her experiences. They just finished a production of what they call Avenue Q, which uh, for those of you who are familiar with this show, it is a rendition, a little bit more, uh, uh, a little bit more of an edge than maybe what you saw with your former Sesame Street experience when you were younger. Uh, and they have put on a show that got fabulous reviews, both within the USM community and the greater region. So I'm going to turn it over to you uh, for just a minute, Rachel. First of all, uh, thank you for joining us, and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're uh, what? What year are you? I'm a senior at USM. I'm a musical theater major. Um, I'm from Portland, Maine. I grew up in Portland. Nice. Welcome to have you have you with. So thank you. You were the fabulous Kate Monster <laughs> yes. in Avenue Q. Which is, you got some great lines. So. Yeah. What was that like? How did how did you feel like uh, the show went for you? Did you enjoy what you did? Did you like your character? And, yeah. And uh, any funny uh, any funny stories that you should tell <laughs> us about the uh, the cast? Um, I really liked my character. I think. I found a lot of myself in Kate, so it was really easy to relate <laughs> to her in the show, um, in her personality. But I think uh, working with the puppets, it definitely was an interesting experience. It was my first time doing that, so that was also an added benefit to doing this show because it was building a new skill that I hadn't done before. So it was really fun. Yeah, and it's so nice when the audience appreciates it, which they really Yeah, do. it's a lot harder than I thought it would be. So. <laughs> Now, Avenue Q, Ed, uh, you, um, you're, the, uh, you're the faculty member that kind of brought this and produced it and directed it, and uh, why Avenue Q? What, what was attractive to you? What was appealing about the show, and uh, were you pleased with the reaction? Um, it's timely, uh, a little controversial, <laughs> and I think it provided a really good showcase for the talent and the students that we have currently in the School of Music, uh, who are musical theater majors. Um, it's very difficult to produce because of the element of the puppets. Mm. And there's a woman in Saco, Maine, Karen Trask, who made a set of puppets for Lyric Theater a couple years ago. Okay. And you grabbed her and said, so I need you to do this. We grabbed Lyric Theater okay. and asked if we could rent them. Okay. And it provided a, a, a wonderful opportunity for us to do the show and, like I said, showcase the students that we have. Now, now Ed, you've been with us for 16 years as a faculty member. You must have students uh, like Rachel who then go out and they're in local theater, they maybe even professional theater. Uh, tell us a little bit, about, do you go out and sort of try to see their shows? Uh, they get invited to some of their shows and a go out to enjoy Absolutely, them? that's that's part of the job to support them yeah. in what they're doing. A lot of them have already, already have professional credits. Yeah, wonderful. Um, working at places like Main State Music Theater, mm -hmm. Gunkwood Playhouse, yeah. um, Hackmatack in Berwick, yeah. the ones that are currently sure. students. Sure. In the, the, you, the School of Music is some place that I've noticed students feel very much like a, a part of a family. The, mm -hmm. the faculty know you, they like you, they've, you've auditioned right from the beginning, you know that they want you there, and it feels in your, your completion rates in the School of Music are outstanding. and, and uh, feels like it's a community. Has it felt that way to you? Yeah, it's, it's really hard not to feel part of a family. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from supportive teachers to just sitting in the lobby with people that aren't even your major, that might be a music ed major or a musical theater major. Right. It, right. It's really hard to not feel supported by everyone because you're going through so many changes in your, in your voice or in yeah. whatever you're focused on. Right. And having that support and comfort from everyone, it really, it, you do feel like a family. And, and can I just brag, I think you've got some of the most spectacular faculty members ever. Yeah. I don't want to put you on the spot, but don't you think that's true? Absolutely. <laughs> really, I, I mean, I don't every think... single one of them like knows their stuff, they love <laughs> students. I'm like, please, let's have this in every university across yeah. the country. I mean, with, well, with voice lessons specifically, I feel like I'll go in and I'll have a specific problem or, or thing that I need to, to work on and they'll just know exactly how to fix it. And it's, it's crazy how much knowledge that you can get just even in a year of studying music yeah. at USM. Yeah, so. sounds good. And any big plans for your next uh, next adventure, next theater adventure that uh, you'd like to do with the students here at USM? Well, we are uh, 
in talks with lining up what we'll do next school year as the fall musical in the concert hall okay. and our co-production with the theater in the spring of 2018. 2018. 80, 80. I heard an opera is in the future. Is that true? Well, opera is being produced this right March. Now. Yeah. Nice. Well, let me thank you both for coming in. We really have greatly appreciate it. And it's wonderful to talk about some of the exciting and interesting and very funny uh, theater productions that we've done at USM. But I have some special news for you. Uh, we, many of you know, we took on almost an impossible task. We said to the world, we are going to raise one million dollars in roughly just under 90 days. We didn't do that. We actually raised 1.5 million dollars in about 75 days. It was spectacular and we just can't thank the, the Greater Portland uh, alumni, we, the stakeholders, the community members, over 600 people participated, 121 faculty members, uh, a terrific, terrific showing, and we raised $1.5 million in under uh, 80 days. It was just a terrific achievement, and we're just delighted. But there's a special piece of good news for those of you in the School of Music, and I know you care deeply about the School of Music. We found out about 30 days ago that the Bingham Family Trust is going to give us $600,000 for a permanent endowment for the School of Music, for students like you, and maybe immediately for you, I don't know, Rachel, uh, in perpetuity that we can use to have scholarships for School of Music students. We are just delighted and we are very, very pleased with, with their support of our outstanding nationally acclaimed School of Music. So I want to end on that note. and. Uh, we want to thank you both for coming in again. We appreciate it greatly.